She went over to her apartment and grabbed her suitcase, but never came out. She said, I'm the maintenance guy. I heard you're looking for me. A blank, the blanket. Oh my God, the that is my blanket. Oh, let me call it. Oh my God, call it. Have you ever been rejected by someone you liked? How did you feel? Disappointed, embarrassed, sad, upset, or maybe even a little angry? But eventually you did get over it, didn't you? Well, the man in this case could not handle being rejected by a girl he was interested in, and he ended up doing something truly horrible. Let's look into the case of Mia Marcano, the girl who was killed for rejecting a man. Mia Marcano was born on April 26, 2002, to her mom, Emma Scabriel, and dad, Marlon Marcano. Her dad is a famous DJ based in Florida who goes by the name DJ Eternal Vibes. Mia had one older brother, Marlon Jr., and they both grew up in Pembroke Pines, Florida. When their parents divorced, their mom went to live in the Virgin Islands, and their dad remarried a lady known as Giselle Blanche, who became like a second mother to Mia and her brother. Growing up, Mia was described as a smart and confident young lady who really loved her family and was always there for them. She was beautiful and ambitious and knew exactly what she wanted in life and went for it. Her family lovingly called her Mimi and completely supported her in everything she did. They also referred to her as the family's princess. She exceeded my expectations because, you know, she's a, she's just a beautiful girl. She was very smart, knew what she wanted. Um, was not easily influenced. What Mia wants, Mia's gonna get. Mia attended Charles Flanagan High School, where she was known as a bright student who was always there for others. She graduated in May 2020, and instead of taking a gap year, she enrolled at Valencia College in Orlando that same year. She intended to pursue an art degree and later take a course in sports medicine or physiotherapy. While still studying, Mia got a part-time job in a leasing office in Aiden Villas, a student housing complex located near the University of Central Florida. And to make things easier for her, she also got an apartment there. For a while, things seemed to be going well for Mia as she was easily juggling between classes and work. But then she started having some awkward encounters with a maintenance guy who kept trying to hit on her. She turned him down several times, but the guy just kept insisting to the point that Mia even had to tell her family about it. On Friday, September 24th, 2021, Mia left work at around 5 p.m., hoping to catch a flight to Fort Lauderdale to visit her family. She went over to her apartment and grabbed her suitcase, but never came out. Mia's family members started to get worried when she stopped responding to their texts and phone calls. It was so unlike her to go off the grid like that. They told themselves that maybe she was busy trying to catch her flight or was having issues with her phone, but then her flight landed and there was no sign of Mia. Her phone was not going through and her family knew that something was definitely wrong. At around 9.30 p.m., Mia's mom called the Orange Sheriff's Office and asked for a wellness check to be done on Mia. A deputy was dispatched a few moments later, and he went over to Mia's apartment to check on her. When he got there, he knocked on the door several times, but no one answered. Eventually, one of Mia's roommates arrived and let the officer into the apartment, and what they found was enough to convince them that something bad had happened to Mia. When the officer tried to enter Mia's room, he noticed that the door was unlocked, but something was blocking it from the inside. He went around and peered through the back window, and that's when he saw a mini dresser placed right in front of the door, as if Mia had been trying to prevent someone from getting in. The officer also noted that the window had been tampered with, and that there were jewelry scattered on the floor, and some red stains on her pillow. The deputy spoke to Mia's roommate, who said that Mia had texted her at 5 p.m., saying that she was heading to the airport. When asked if there was someone in Mia's life who would want to harm her, she mentioned the maintenance guy, Armando Caballero. She said that Armando had been harassing Mia, asking her out on a date, and that Mia had always rejected him. According to Mia's family, the deputy then left the scene, and they did not hear back with any more information about what was being done. Arden Villas also did not respond to the family's calls, so they decided to go over to Orlando and check what was happening. We haven't heard from them. 
They have not responded to the call from, we call the emergency line on the way to Orlando. They have not even responded to that. They arrived at the apartments around 3 a.m. and called the sheriff's office to the complex to give them access to Mia's room. Apparently, even after all the signs of struggle in the room, the place had not even been declared a crime scene, and so Mia's family had to investigate on their own. Upon entering her room, they found a yellow box cutter under a rug that did not belong to Mia. And then a short while later, guess who showed up in front of Mia's apartment? Armando Callebo. He said, are you looking for Mia? I said, who are you? He said, I'm the maintenance guy. I heard you're looking for me. Mia's aunt found this to be really weird since they had not yet announced that Mia was missing. So how did he find out? It was also suspicious that he would show up at 4 a.m. while he was off work and had no reason to be there. Armando told the officer that he last saw Mia at 3 p.m. that day and that a mutual friend called Tati informed him that Mia was missing. But Mia's family did not buy this and they confronted him about it. Me and Tati were conversating about it till I finally, they came okay, up. But Should Tati I go and see someone, if I see anything? No one knows Tati, that's my whole thing. Not Tati even the roommate knows Tati. Here, She's an employee, but you keep saying Tati is a friend and that you've all hung out together. No one here knows Tati. All her well, other friends all showed up. Her closest people. friends that live in the complex were all here with us early on. No one knows Tati, only you. Mia's family already knew about Armando's obsession with Mia and that he would send her crazy texts promising to give her his life savings if she agreed to go out with him. As of right now, you have you sent tomorrow, obsessive you tomorrow, texts to Mia. We have all seen the texts. You talked about giving her your life savings. You cash out her money and you claim that you weren't in who touch. Told her gave it's her on life text. Savings. I never As said a matter of fact, we're gonna get a police report to pull your phone records if that's the case. All these accusations, as well as his suspicious behavior, should have been more than enough for the deputy to detain and question Armando. But he didn't. In fact, he just let him go, saying that there was no evidence to suspect him. Mia's family was totally outraged by this and decided to take matters into their own hands to try and find Mia. They secretly followed Armando to his apartment. And as they were watching him, they saw something that really terrified them. Armando was taking some things from his car. And when the family looked closely, they saw that it was a pink blanket, gloves, and a black backpack. They recognized the blanket as Mia's, which meant that Armando was probably the person behind her disappearance. He's he has gloves. 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 He has gloves a blank, the blanket. Oh my god, the that is my blanket! Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! The family quickly called 911, and when the police arrived, they went out and confronted Armando. Since the police had no search warrant, they couldn't legally enter inside the apartment to search for Mia. Armando did eventually let the family in, but they didn't find anything significant, so yet again, Armando was free. This was really frustrating for the family as they had thought he would finally reveal where he was hiding Mia. And to make matters worse, Armando also vanished later that day. By now, Mia had been entered as a missing person by the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And since Armando was the only suspect in the case, a warrant of arrest was issued upon him on Saturday the 25th at around 4.30 p.m. A few hours later, detectives raided and secured Armando's apartment, but it was already too late. Armando was long gone. Investigators learned that on the day of Mia's disappearance at around 2 p.m., someone had opened her apartment using an on-call maintenance key fob, which was known to be in Armando's possession. The same key was used again to open the apartment at 4.30 p.m. before Mia's shift ended 30 minutes later. Then Mia used her key to enter her apartment at 5.06 p.m. Then almost an hour later, Armando's car was seen leaving the apartment complex. At 7.16, Armando placed a fake maintenance call to the complex. Then 10 minutes later, he called the apartment office staff, asking to be let in the gate, probably trying to establish an alibi. Armando left the complex at around 7.38 p.m. 
With this new information, police believed that Armando was probably waiting for Mia in the apartment so that he could kidnap her. So they started digging into Armando's profile, trying to track him down. Meanwhile, Mia's family members were becoming more and more devastated and frustrated. They were spreading Mia's photos everywhere in the area and on social media, asking anyone with information about her whereabouts to come forward. Bring her home safe. Just drop her off and let us know where she is. We'll pick her up. Just bring her home. Then, on the early morning of Monday, September 27th, police received a call reporting that a man had been found hanging in the garage of another apartment complex. That man turned out to be Armando Caballero, and he had been dead for a while. This discovery was really devastating to the case, as he was the only one who knew where Mia was and if she was still alive. Mia's family was furious that Armando chose to take the cowardly way out instead of saying what he did to Mia. Still, her family held on to the hope that they'll still find Mia alive. They believed that Armando had kidnapped Mia and that she remained somewhere nearby. In a press conference, Mia's aunt sent a message to her, telling her that they were not going to give up hope on finding her. You know our family is strong. You know our family is big. You know we will never sleep one night until we get you home. We miss you. We know that you're strong. With Armando gone, the search for Mia quickly intensified, and dozens of people came in to help. Along with law enforcement officers, they scoured through the entire town searching rivers, lakes, and bushes for any sign of her. By September 30th, the search teams had conducted over 30 searches spanning across three counties using various resources including helicopters, canine units, and dive teams. The Sheriff's Department had also established a central operations center in Orange County where the investigators could process all tips and leads as well as communicate with people in the field. No bit of information is too small or too insignificant if someone, you know, knows of something, saw something, recognizes her face, uh, you know, we will we'll take that information and you can remain anonymous too. We just want the information uh, to try and find Mia. This case gained national attention, with Mia's family calling on the FBI to come and help in the investigation. This request was echoed by a local congressman who took to Twitter to ask the FBI to join the case. The Marsano family is right the FBI should assist in the search for Mia Marsano. She could have been brought across state lines, so it's key to have their support in the investigation. We will make a request this morning. He later retweeted an update to say that the FBI had joined the case, saying, the FBI has informed us that they're reaching out to our local field office regarding the Mia Marsano case today. As law enforcement officers ramped up their search efforts around the complex, Mia's family and friends held candlelit vigils to pray for her safe return. Investigators tried retracing Armando's footsteps on the day Mia disappeared and found that he had visited a place called Timber Scone. This is a rough neighborhood in Orlando that's known for all manners of crimes, including gun violence, murders, and narcotics. A lot of people had moved out due to the insecurity and the area had become a ghost town with abandoned buildings and some that seemed like they're about to collapse. So what was Armando doing there? Investigators found that Armando had lived in this area at some point in his life and therefore knew the ins and outs of the place. Cell phone records uh, showed us that Caballero was in or near the timber scan apartments on Friday evening between eight and nine o'clock. Uh, that's the evening that she was reported missing. A search team was sent to the area, and on October 2nd, 2021, they found Mia's body hidden in a wooded area near Timber Scan. Her hands and feet were bound with duct tape, and she had duct tape covering her mouth. Her purse was also found nearby, containing the shirt she was last seen wearing. She was partially dressed in only her jeans, bra, and robe. There was no evidence of trauma, and due to the level of decomposition, the medical examiner could not determine how she really died. They discovered a body we believe to be uh, that of Mia Marcano. About an hour ago, detectives notified 
me as parents of our tragic news. Our hearts are broken. This was not the outcome that Mia's loved ones had hoped for, and they were totally crushed by the news. An emotional vigil was held in Mia's honor as hundreds of people came to mourn and offer their support to the family. I feel defeated. I feel like I failed my cousin, and I don't know how we're gonna get through this. I miss my baby. And I wish, I wish she had come home today. Mia's family felt that the management of Aiden Villas was partially to blame for what happened to Mia, saying that they did not do enough to protect Mia. They've since filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the complex. Just to have unfettered access to someone's uh, apartment is irresponsible and, and is definitely not in the best interest of the tenants. Had he not had the access to Mia's apartment, that this could have been easily preventable. As it turned out, this was not Armando's first offense. In March 2021, while working in a different apartment complex, he wrote a note to another woman asking for a date. The woman agreed to go out with him a few days later, but then he started insisting that they go out that night, and the woman got spooked and canceled the date altogether. Later that night, a black dumbbell was thrown through her bedroom window, and although she didn't see who did it, she knew that it was Armando. Armando was also arrested in 2013 on charges of detaining a small homemade explosive in a high school as a prank. Fortunately, no one was hurt. He pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and was sentenced to probation. Aiden Villas claimed that they did a background check on Armando before they hired him, saying that this record belonged to another person with a similar name. But what are the chances that two people could have the same first, middle, and last name and also share the same date of birth? What do you think about this case? Should the complex be held responsible for Mia's death? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more.